Now I'd like to introduce you to the motor adapter for NI MyRio and the Digilent geared motor. We will review the features and functional diagram, the board connectors, and I.O. signals. Here's the adapter shown connected to the MyRio as well as to the Digilent geared motor. The adapter is included in the NI MyRio mechatronics kit as is the Digilent geared motor. This is the Sha Yang Ye IG22 geared motor plus encoder. And this is also available separately from Digilent as the motor gearbox. Let's review the motor adapter features. The board connects directly to either MyRio MXP port with no additional wiring. You can control the following configurations. Two DC motors or two servo motors or one motor and one servo, or you can control one stepper motor. The board is based on the Allegro A4973H bridge PWM motor driver, and the motor current is managed by the TI-TPS24711, and this provides current over limit protection for your motor, especially if it should stall out. You can control the speed of your motor using a PWM style waveform. You have direction control and quadrature encoder feedback to know the shaft position. And you also have motor current and voltage waveform sensing. Finally, you have a 34 pin breakout connector that exposes all of the MXP port pins. Next, let's review the features of the Digilent geared motor. This is a DC motor. It includes carbon brushes. It supports voltages up to 12 volts DC. And I do need to point out that the adapter board says six volts to 16 volts. And that's a reference to how much the board adapter can handle. The Digilent motor is a 12 volt motor. So you definitely need to be aware of the voltage of the motor you are connecting. The motor is terminated in a JST style connector and includes a 1 to 19 planetary gearbox located right here. A two channel quadrature encoder is affixed to the motor shaft at the back side of the motor and this provides 12 counts per revolution of the motor itself. You can use this motor adapter and motor combination for a variety of applications including the basis of a drivetrain for a robotic platform the motor shaft includes the standard D-style shaft, and you could also use this for speed and position control. All right, let's get acquainted with the details of the board by considering its functional diagram. And I'll build up this diagram in stages. The motor adapter is based on the Allegro PWM motor controller and the TI power manager chips here. You will need an external motor DC supply and also an external servo DC supply should you choose to use the servos. This is the connection to the MXP ports. Now the MyRio 5 volt supply is used to power the logic of the Allegro chip as well as the motor encoder. The TI power manager delivers power to the Allegro chip which in turn generates the pair of signals that go out to manipulate the DC motor. The motor speed is controlled by the PWM signal from MyRio and you also have direction control. The pair of encoder feedback signals are fed back as encoder A and B and then the Allegro also provides current sensing from the motor and then there is also sensing available from the motor voltage. The current and voltage then, these waveforms are fed back to MyRio analog inputs. The external DC supply for servo motors needs to be between 4.8 volts and 6.0 volts. This voltage then is fed through the board adapter and then joined with the PWM position control and there is a single attachment point for the servo. There are two optional motor current settings that you can use. And then finally, the TI power manager generates two status signals, one called power good and the other called fault. Now, everything that you see here is duplicated for the second motor. 
All right, next let's consider how this board functionality is available at the motor adapter board connectors. Up at the top of our close-up photo, we have the connection back to MyRio MXP port A or B. You have six wires associated with the Digilent motor, and that is available here in the JST style connector. Also, you'll see these that are designated as motor zero. These are the same exact signals. You can use either the uh, JST connector or the terminal blocks. This terminal block is for your DC motor power supply. Remember that 16 volts is the maximum voltage supported by the adapter board, but you do need to know the maximum voltage for your particular motor. The geared motor that I've been discussing is only a 12 volt motor. The servo motor DC supply is attached to this terminal block, and then the three pin connector for your servo is located right here. As an alternative to using an external supply for your servo, you might also want to consider using the MyRio 5 volt supply directly. The power good signal from the TI Power Manager chip drives this LED on the board to give you a visual indicator about the status of your DC motor supply. Again, all 34 pins are available on this breakout connector. All right, to finish things up, let's consider the details of the board's input and output signals. I'll begin with the control signals. These are MyRio outputs, and alternatively, you can view these as adapter inputs. Here is the name according to the adapter. You have motor zero and motor one. Here's the pin number and pin name of the associated MXP signal. And here's the function as it applies to the adapter. These default values that I'm pointing out, these apply when the specific signal from my Rio is not actively driven. By that I mean it's okay to simply drive the PWM and direction signals. All the others, if you do not specifically set their values, they just go to those default behaviors. Let's consider the feedback and status signals from the adapter back to my Rio. I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of facts here. One is the 2.5 volt offset on both the motor current and motor voltage waveforms. And then also note the scaling. The scaling is different between the current and uh, voltage waveforms. Note that if you see the motor current over limit fault indicator active, that tells you that the motors have in fact been disabled on the board. I'd like to draw your attention to an important point regarding the quadrature encoders. Notice that for motor zero, you have designated inputs on MyRio. However, for motor one, you do not. Notice it's simply DI04 and DI05. This note at the bottom then details the point that there is only one encoder site on a given MXP port. Therefore, you have to use the other port, or you could use one of the two encoder inputs on the MSP port. Simply use the breakout connector to get those signals to the other ports. And last of all, there are several unused MXP IO signals. Those involve the UART as well as your I2C uh, serial bus connections.